And it seemed like there was a chemistry between Charlie, yourself, Adele, and Bob DeBartolaben, who who oh, was before those, Greg Fischel. Old enough to remember all those, are you? Yeah, I, I remember um, Bob DeLaid, Bob DeBartolaben very briefly. Um, I was a little tight, and then of course my main memory was Greg Fischel, yourself, Charlie, and then Donna Gregory, and the other anchors that replaced Adele. Yeah, uh, well. Uh, um the 80s, I kind of consider as the golden age of television, uh, the local television. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Dale Arakawa uh, now wor works in Denver, Colorado. She was, I probably had as good an on-air chemistry with Adele as anybody I've ever worked with. We used to kid each other a lot and, uh, on the air, and we just had a really good time. And then Charlie was kind of like uh, this classy... Uh, consummate anchor Bob DeBartle even still he's in his 80s now still has the best uh, broadcasting voice that I've ever heard and um, you know it was just a, it was a really good team to work with and we had so much fun and and I never really enjoyed Jarrell being on television but I enjoyed going to work every day because I worked with such wonderful people mm, so what was the day like when Mike Krzyzewski was first announced to become the head coach of Duke <laughs> well it, it, it's a really a, an odd thing because nobody had ever heard of him. It's uh, you know nobody knew how to pronounce his name, and I was at that press conference when when he was named coach, and I did his uh, television show the first four years he was at Duke, when he was going through some tough times, and um, when he was announced, uh, everybody thought it was going to be uh, a guy named uh, either Paul Webb who was coaching at Old Dominion, Bob Weltlick who was coaching uh, at Texas, and there was one other guy I cannot remember who that was, but when everybody uh, you know announced Mike Shashevsky, everybody's jaw dropped. Because here was a guy who was coaching at, uh, at Army, and his last year was a losing season at Army, and he's coming to take over at Duke that had just been to the Elite Eight and uh, two years before that had been to the Final Four. And uh, his first year he was 17 and 11, then he went, suffered through like 10 and 18 and 11 and 17, some records like, something like that. And there were a lot of people who wanted to fire Mike Krzyzewski. And uh, he recruited in 1983, he had his freshman Johnny Dawkins, Mark Allery, Jay Billis, who's now on ESPN. Uh, and these, David Henderson uh, out of uh, Warren County, and these guys were the cornerstone of what became a Final Four team in 1986. And, of course, uh, you know, Coach Krzyzewski, uh, everybody saw his name back in 1981 and said, Krzyzewski, how do you pronounce that name? And then it was Krzyzewski, and finally, you know, it, he said, hey, it's Krzyzewski, and everybody <laughs> said, what? How do you get Krzyzewski out of K-R-Z-Y-Z-E-W-S-K-I? But that's the way he pronounced it. Mm -hmm. And in 86, they went to the championship game, right? They went to the championship game, losing to Louisville, 72-69. And they were 37-2 and going into that final game and probably had a better team than Louisville. But I think they just ran out of gas. They had a very, very tough game in the semifinals against uh, Kansas and Danny Manning. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Um, and I think they wore him out, and Purvis Ellison was the big freshman from Louisville who was the MVP of the Final Four. And, uh, and Duke lost, but still, that was, that was a heck of a team, that 1986 team. Mm, never nervous Purvis, coached by Denny Crum, but Danny Manning got his revenge back in 88 when... Um, they beat Duke in the uh, semifinals of the NCAA tournament, and then... Uh, went up against Oklahoma for the championship, their conference rival, and Oklahoma had beaten them twice during the regular season, but Kansas won the big one. And that, this was back before it was the Big 12, it was known then as the Big 8. The Big 8 conference, right. I kind of, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not big on all these super conferences. I liked it when it was the Big 8, and then Texas, and then we're in the old Southwest Conference, and the ACC didn't have 12 teams, of which uh, I'm, I'm one of those people who doesn't think Boston College should be in the uh, ACC simply because they're way up there with no rivalries, and, you know, they're just kind of hanging off the, the coast about to drop in up there in mm. Boston, but... That's for another time. Right. And I was reading in um, a book about Pistol Pete Maravich that he really wanted to go to NC State, but his grades wasn't up to par. Well, his dad, Press Maravich, uh, was the coach at NC State. Uh, Press Maravich uh, led State to the upset over Duke in 1965 in the ACC tournament. 1966, State made it to the um, championship game, losing to Duke, and Duke ended up in the Final Four that year. But... Uh, 
Yeah, uh, Pete went to Broughton High School and wanted to go to NC State to play for his dad, but uh, he did not have the SAT scores to get into uh, NC State. And if you also remember reading in that same book, uh, Pete really wanted to go play for Bucky Waters at uh, West Virginia. Bucky later became the um, the basketball coach at uh, Duke and now does you know commentary and everything. Bucky's a good friend. But, and Pete really did not want to go to LSU, but his dad kind of browbeat him into going to LSU to play for him. And, of course, he averaged, uh, you know, 44, I think it was like 44.2 or something for his career. I mean, he averaged 44 points a game and, three, you know, and scored over, um, what was it, 3,000 points or so in just three years. You know, you hear about Hansbrook going to break the ACC record. It's taken him four years to do this. And Pete, you know, had held records that will never be broken in just three years. He was he was amazing. Mm, and kids, this was without the three-point line. Without the three-point shot. That is correct. And and Pete was a three-point shooter, too. Pete would have had a lot more points if, uh, if the three-point line was in. Mm, and I also thought had ESPN would have been around back during that period and the NCAA would have had 64 teams in the tournament, they probably would have did some damage in the NCAA tournament. Well, you know, I do not know that that's the case, Jarrell, because uh, LSU, was uh, they had Pete and a bunch of other players who weren't all that good. And, uh-huh. uh, they only made, uh, in his three years at LSU on the varsity, the, the best they could do was make it to the NIT. Uh, I don't think, I don't know if they would have been an NCAA tournament team. Who knows back then, you know, they didn't have the, the inflated 64-team tournament. But LSU teams weren't that good. It was basically Pete doing all the shooting, all the scoring. That's why he could score so much. He took all the shots. Mm-hmm. Now, by you working at REO, did you ever catch a peek and see what WTVD was doing in their sports division? Oh yeah, you always try to monitor and see what the uh, see what the competition is doing. You know, that's that's kind of the way you keep sharp. Although my my theory was always, Jarrell, is that if you're doing the best that you can and you feel like you've done a good job, then uh, you know if the if the other t- uh, the other station does something. Uh, you know, good, good for them. Congratulate them, and uh, because they're, not, you know, you're not going to do the best. You're not going to get the best of them all the time. But uh, I kind of always felt like uh, the sports guys at all the stations needed to stick together. So if uh, somebody at TVD did something good, I was always there to congratulate them. So there was always friendly competition between everybody from REL and TVD. Well, you know, it's a. Uh, you were you're friends with the guys, and and you know, and and Drew Smith, who you did sports uh, for years at WTVD, was is a good friend. And I you know, I told Drew one time, I said, Drew, you know, if you do something good, all I can say is congratulations to you. And I hope, and I, you know, we got to stick together. Mm-hmm. Now uh, that, that's the kind of the way I look at it because. The sports department and a newscast is a very small thing, and the news sometimes the news department treats the sports department kind of like you're a necessary evil. And so I always felt like uh, sports departments everywhere needed to, you know, to really stick together.